Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Change the Live, hosted by your truly, Deontay Burden. Got an awesome show planned for you guys tonight. Tonight we'll be discussing being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Again, that's being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And um, I think um, this is actually a remix and a recap uh, of one of my previous shows from a couple years ago. And um, I think it's really needed because a lot of times people, when they face adversity and change, they kind of clam up and do all kind of crazy stuff. So I want to have this show tonight so we can discuss the particular uh, title of the show, being comfortable, being uncomfortable, to give my whole spiel on the whole subject, and also give you guys solutions to help you be able to uh, deal with adversity and change. Before we get started, I want to say what's up to my awesome producers, DJ Lab and Slick Three Sixteen. What's going on? Thursday again. Hey, hey. <laughs> in the house. They keep coming around, don't they? There you go. There you go. <laughs> and uh, rehash, you know the uh, the previous week. I mean, the previous week with everything. First, uh, uh, as always, we're still going through the pandemic. Nothing changed with that. I uh, want to welcome um, in-studio guest, my son, P.J. Burden. Hey. This is uh, P.J.'s last weekend in town. He's living. Mm. What's going on, Pooh? Yeah. Uh, P.J.'s leaving uh, on Monday, going to basic training. Oh. Be back in December, go to AIT in January. He'll be back in May. Yeah. And then he starts school in the next August and everything. Super proud of Junior. And everything, man. It's uh, it's uh, gonna be real different with me because PJ is my sounding boy, <laughs> and uh, you know. But I'm I'm gonna miss my baby. But uh, I'm very very proud of the young man he became, and uh, we we had his uh going away dinner this past weekend. Oh, really? And he was like, he had his friends with him. Oh, really? Little, little yeah. girl has some big old legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He <laughs> liked them drumsticks. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> Good Lord, boy. Boy, you ain't a bird if you don't like a thick. I tell you. My junior. Big old drumstick came up in there. Right, yeah, you know the ones that have it uh this word of uh, uh Baranosaurus. Oh my god. Gotta say goodbye. Yeah, your little friend coming out with a little fitted dress on. Lord. Boy. Call me Pops. <laughs> woo, woo. Here you go, son. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> yeah, P leave, man. I'm, I just want to let you know, dog. I tell you all the time, I'm super proud of you, man, and everything and stuff. So, got that, uh, the show. That was for everybody here. <laughs> That's okay. Watch yourself for the camera, son. That's okay. But, uh, I'm a healthy avocado. But again, that was uh, PJ's coming here, flipping the script, and he's just holding papers. Uh, <laughs> Next thing I want to know, just kind of bring everybody up to speed. Uh, we got the courses and everything coming down the pipe. The video should start blasting probably tomorrow morning. But I got all the events and everything coming down. So I got the, the tax prep course coming out for you guys. I'll probably do like a live event the next week or so. Uh, got some more of the other courses and everything coming out. But just be on the lookout. Most importantly, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel. But definitely, if you like the Changing Lives uh, the Mr. Short Doll or the Majestic Facebook page, you should be getting those ads and promos coming in. So be on the lookout. The live event's coming out. I don't know for sure if I'm doing it. Somewhere probably between the 12th and the 15th. So just definitely be on the lookout for that. Also got a major announcement to give you guys. Uh, you guys know I'm the owner of WDA Investment. That's my private equity firm. We've been processing loans uh, for the past seven, eight months. I uh, want to let you guys know we're going full, uh, full blast and uh, providing those uh, loans out to everybody. So I got personal loans, business loans. With the business loans, I got um, all kind of different kind of uh, uh, unique capital uh, funding projects in terms of uh, split funding, factoring loans. I got small business loan. I got real estate loans. Not necessarily real estate loans where you can buy your own house. Most of you want to buy commercial property. You already have something you can leverage out with that. Also got um, we got a new COVID loan, which gives up to $200,000. You just need a 600 credit score. Uh I'll put all the parameters out what's going on uh, with that. Um, with that. And that's up to $200,000 we can lend out with that. But I just want to let you guys know the WDA Investments is live as of tomorrow morning. <laughs> with issuing all those different loan products and everything and stuff. A uh, big shout out to my brother, uh, uh, Floyd Bryan. That's one of my brothers in uh, 100 Black Men with me. He uh, gave me a, a stern pep talk earlier today. About I was dragging my feet. He kind of okay. called me out. Called you out. Let you know what was up. But like I like what he told me. He said I wouldn't say this, but I didn't know no better. Cause you you a money making brother. 
right, he said most right. guys I can't have that kind of conversation with. Right, yeah. So he kind of kind of got up under my skin, but kind of made me feel good too. Right. I said, say no more. So but yeah, you and they'll pat you on the back at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't ain't like, like, yeah okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> Who's scared to make money? All right, I got you. But yeah, that'll be available at WDA Investments. And again, we'll have the promos and the, everything coming out for you guys to see. But I just want to get that shout out that WDA Investment will be offering those loan products out. Um, and last, I want to got, let you guys remind you, I talked about it because I did it the other day with uh, my uh, publishing company, B-Fan Publishing, where we do the actual clothing for my different companies and also uh, my books and everything. So make sure you get a chance to go to B-Fan Publishing. The B is for burden. And uh, <laughs> like the Facebook page for B-Fan Publishing. I have the connection with some of my uh, uh, online stores with the merchandise already. I have my uh, award-winning book, Respect My Brother. Okay. It's on Amazon, so I'm thinking it'll hit it and everything. Oh, uh, don't ask me. You self-published that self book? Self-published. Self-published. Don't ask me what award I won, but I won, I won some award. Okay. But uh, <laughs> it's a great book for, especially with parents and people dealing with multiple kids and kids being able to get along. But it's a great book. I wrote that book two years ago, and I got a, a couple more coming down the pipe. But make sure you go to B-Fan Publishing. Again, that's why I have the merchandise and the books and everything that uh, I – my children or anybody that gets a contract with B-Fan Publishing, we, you know, we're publishing it all. So if you have a book that you want to publish and everything, reach out to me and everything. We'll get that stuff squared away for you. Okay. I know you guys are saying ain't nothing that Poochie don't do. And you know what? I agree with you. <laughs> and, uh, but just check us out. Like I said, go to the Facebook page, B-Fan Publishing. Like it. I started sending out some invitations out the other night. I uh, put some of the merchandise on there. But you'll see the merchandise for Changing Lives. Uh, Mr. Short Dollar. And most importantly, I want to bring, and I bring it up again in the show, we will have all the uh, the Nubian Christmas apparel. Okay. I okay. started off late with it last year, but all the Nubian Christmas apparel, you'll see the commercials and everything coming out, but I'll still be pushing that more. So make sure. Would that be through the Madame Burdan? Madame Burdan. Okay. <laughs> My brother. My brother. So a family, family don't forget. That's right. <laughs> well, be on the lookout for that. Nathan, been working hard for it, working hard, and we put it out so late last year. But we're gonna retool everything. Everything will be out starting this month, later on this month with everything. So be on the lookout for it. I also have some postings going on Facebook, so just be looking out for it and everything. We'll, we'll be having. Uh, will you be having a little bit more women friendly apparel this year? Oh, strictly for the ladies. Okay, okay. <laughs> this strictly for the ladies. And everything, but I'm gonna have a couple more things on there. I got a lot of positive feedback. Uh, well, well, in regards to some of the merchandise, we listen, we learn, we change, and some we kept the same. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, if it's selling, it's selling. Mm. But uh, we, we definitely have add some things to it and stuff. And I want to tell you guys, appreciate all the support you guys are giving us and everything with that. But going into tonight's show again, well, first this change lives hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Please go to the Facebook. And uh, YouTube page, subscribe to both. You know, on Change the Lives, we talk about motivation, professional development, and personal development. Also, uh, follow me on Instagram at Deontay underscore 77. And you can also check me out on TikTok on the Change the Lives. <laughs> hey, my Change the Lives page on TikTok is really grown. It's grown. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, and I've done it, you know, the mature way. I ain't out there jiggle. I was about to say jiggle, but, but yeah, <laughs> I ain't out there doing stuff, making videos with PJM. Okay, you use your children mm. to make videos. Okay, okay. No. Yeah, I, I, you know, the debate was, uh, what you call I call it kind of organized chaos. Mm. Uh, well, you know, even with, you know, just, you know, not even ridicule. The thing that's kind of sad about me, we're looking at probably the person with the most important job in the United States and just, uh, I, I wish they'd have been a little bit more civil mm -hmm. or political with doing that. Um, I'm really tripping with Trump. He didn't want to c condemn the white supremacists. Uh, I do think that I hope that they can get it a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say organized word, but more so with that a little bit more professional, a lot mm -hmm. more professional with doing it. I think, you know, people a lot of times don't really realize that, you know, again, you know, probably Joe Biden, probably the most qualified candidate been around in a while. And I, well, I don't necessarily know if you're living, you know, as far as, be like 40, 50 years in the Senate. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you did when somebody doesn't know anything. Even people say he's clueless. He's not He's not clueless. And he's probably one of the very few Democrats walking around that Republicans like mm. uh, and everything. And uh, I think that's probably going to be the biggest challenge with uh, 
President Trump. But President Trump been sitting for for four years plus. He's always been the mouth of the unheard. You see what? That's why he didn't condemn the white supremacists. Mm -hmm. um, it's gonna be unique. Hopefully, we can get more out of the next debate. But we'll see how that goes and everything. Right. Um, everybody, you know, just like a little cat fight to me. And and again, I you know I'm I'm real big on me and not I want to see a debate and not an argument. And so hopefully they can get it on track for the next one mm -hmm. uh, with that. But we'll see how that goes and everything. You know, in tonight's show, we're talking about being uh, comfortable, being uncomfortable. Again, <laughs> being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, it's real funny because uh, what had me thinking about this show, I just, like I said, you have so many people, when they have uh, adversity in their lives and stuff like that, they just clam up, quit, mm -hmm. walk away from stuff. And it happens far too often. Me being a... Uh, former military, I probably got, I'm probably a little callous. I'm probably a, little, a lot callous mm -hmm. with a lot of things, you know, and everything. A lot of stuff go over my head because at the end of the day, I want them folks, you know, mission first. So I kind of stick with what's going on. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know, I don't really care who I got to work with or whatever, as long as we get it done. I don't really be tripping on that stuff too tough. I just want to make sure at the end of the day, mission done, task done, that's all we need to make sure we're taking care of. As long as everybody's safe during the process, we can do it. And I know a lot of people, you now things just go off one inkling. You know, it's time to it's, shut it's, it down. It's down. I quit yeah. or whatever. And that's not probably the most wisest way to approach things in life. And, you know, I was thinking about, uh, we talked about this on the, the previous time we did this, about that movie uh, Hurt Locker. Mm -hmm. We was talking about the uh, the guy that was in Iraq that was defusing the bombs, the IEDs and stuff. And being able to, number one, you're in the, you're in the, in the desert in the Middle East. Mm hmm 150, 200 degree weather, probably hotter than inside Say that bomb suit. Weather, well, I'm just saying, you know, especially <laughs> especially when you're in that bomb suit, uh -huh. and you're in that, you know, you're already kind of agitated already naturally when you're already in the heat, and then you're talking when you got on this bomb suit, it's probably adding another, you know, 7 to 100 degrees to your body temperature, and then you got to go out there and deal with a bomb, mm -hmm. and just to kind of look at the conditions those people had to deal with to be able to go out there. In that adverse situation, not only do you have to go defuse bombs, you might have to go out in what we call like a kill zone or a hot zone to go defuse a bomb because you don't know if a sniper's sitting out there looking at you. You don't know if some... <laughs> they said the bomb out there for bait. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And th 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 being in those kind of conditions to have some kind of calm to go out there and defuse the bombs, mm -hmm. set everything up, give a status, come back out, and be able to do that day in, day out, it takes... A certain way of thinking, mm -hmm. a certain level of resiliency, a certain level of discipline. And I wanted to see just share, you know, I know what has worked for me in my life. And I think I'm a pretty resilient, bounce back person. Mm -hmm. You know, I have my moments, don't get me wrong. But uh, overall, I think I do pretty good with stress and being, uh, with dealing with change. And uh, I just want to share my blueprint with dealing with everything with you guys uh, because I think it's, it's really needed, especially. Mm -hmm. We start talking about, you know, uh, you know, just being, you know, our show is, is open to everybody. We start looking at the African-American community. We have a lot of our young men. As soon as everything gets kind of somewhat difficult, a lot of folks quit. Mm -hmm. You know, and even I want to just, you know, limit that to the young men. A lot of people, you know, just like, nah, you know, I thought it was this and then I quit. Like, nah, we can't do that. And every time things get rough, cause we all know if it's something worth having, you're going to put a little work behind it to make it happen. So that's why, you know, kind of like the basis of this show, just to talk about what it takes to to deal with adversity. Again, tonight's show, we're talking about being comfortable, being uh, uncomfortable. And um, I really think a lot of people, when they be, get in situations where things don't really go the way they planned, the way they thought about it, they just like, no, nah, I don't want to do this no more. Mm -hmm. You know, you start that job, and you, it, it seemed pretty good, and you got, you know, once you start working, it ain't the same. You don't like your supervisor. You don't like the conditions. Uh, you know, you, you watch your friend or family members experience in a certain situation. They like it. You get in there like, no, nah, this ain't what I want to do. And far too often we get in the situations that are temporary, mm -hmm. but we turn around and make a permanent decision. Okay. You know, how many times you heard of folks that went to kids that went to college? And they call mom or daddy because that first month or two, now mom and daddy miss them. Mm -hmm. They're like the kids do. And what mama said, daddy say on the phone?
come on home, we'll go somewhere closer. Right. And that kid never goes back to damn school. <laughs> How is it? And again, so many times, you know, you start working on a certain project, doing a certain job, and they get into it, and it just ain't what they thought it was. But again, that's just something temporary. Mm-hmm. Did you really get a chance to to find out what it was? Did you get, you know, get your, give yourself a chance to get through that learning curve, go through your adjustment period, you know what I mean? Right. And a lot of times, folks just don't want to do that. Mm. Anytime things get a little bit off track, it's just like, I don't even want to deal with it. Mm, you're like, true. man, what in the hell? What, man? <laughs> you just there a week, you know. A week. <laughs> yeah, you just been there three days. I got that call from my older son. You know, he went to college. I'm talking about the coach don't like him and all that kind of stuff. And like, yeah, man, I'm just like, man, I'm about sick of this. I'm like, well, look, bro. <laughs> your brother done moved in your damn room. <laughs> Shit. Hell, you coming back. Well, I know, you, you ain't got yeah, no I, sleep. <laughs> I ain't invited you a nothing. I call hell getting your ass out of there. Right. Like, damn, PJ sitting right there now. PJ no damn way. Well, you better make it out. Can't come back. You come back to visit, buddy. You can't come, come back. back. To live, huh? Yeah, I'll tell him to his face. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. They already know. I done had you 18 years. Yeah. I don't want you no more. You know, we could be a trend. What, 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 like, like the halfway, I will transition. We're transitioning home. now. You get out of school, <laughs> maybe give you about six months. Right, right. Get on your feet, but you got to get the hell out of here. 18. <laughs> Y'all done took care of 18. And I done prepped you. Right. I done prepped you, you know. You all hey, you he know too long. He what, graduated, what, two months ago? I tried to get you two weeks after you graduated. <laughs> I got there. Shit. No, we're it was, blaming it on was the corona. It was yeah. corona. It was he, corona. He corona argue, be gone. Oh, absolutely. He can argue with me. No, hey, you know, two weeks after graduation, you got to go. <laughs> you got to go. You got to have a plan. Yeah, I mean, well, we done, we done made the plan. We done, we've been making that plan for 18 years. Right. Hey, when it's time to, after graduation, two weeks, time to go. So you already got the plan. You already celebrate. You they already, already know. They already Not celebrate know. like he, you know, you're going to go. Are we but. celebrating that too? Yeah. <laughs> if brother moved in, I asked the brother up there, I said, when you moving in your brother room? He said, probably next day. <laughs> 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 love? Ain't no love, law. <laughs> you know? The way they hey, who's spread? That room. <laughs> yeah, spread on out. Everybody cool. More room. <laughs> less appetite, yeah. Less share, and everything cheaper. Right, right. Everything go down. The bills go down. Both food, eat, shit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was just mess with you, Pete. <laughs> Not really. But uh, but again, that's one of the things. Again, we talk about being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Just knowing how to handle things you know, in life when you know you had those challenges, those setbacks, those failures, and not just losing it. Mm-hmm. You know, you know what I mean? Because I I remember just dealing with you know some people. Especially during tax season, you know, tax season chaotic, and you have people that start working for you and everything, and folks calling, well, well, you know, where my damn refund mm-hmm. it? What you do with my money and everything? And you know, at the end of the day, listen, this person already amped up. Mm-hmm. They wonder about their refund. They worry about their money. I can't meet them with, with what they giving me, <laughs> right. sir. Let me, sir. Let me just check. Right. You know, because at, be well, cool at the end of calm and quiet. at the end of the day. Depending on how it is, hell, if they ain't got their refund, I ain't got my money either. So right. we need to find out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't the only one that got paid. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And I say this to say, you've had, you, you have people that work for you, and I can't deal with this. I can't handle it. Like, hey, man, listen, relax. Just just relax. Just go through the same script. Mm-hmm. Handle it with that. And a lot of times people, when they get those uh, uncomfortable, challenging moments in life, they lose it. Mm-hmm. They lose it, and uh, does that mean you're not going to be successful in life? Does that mean you're you, you're going to have issues and stuff in life? No, but does that mean you're going to be limited in a lot of aspects? Absolutely, mm-hmm. because we do know when you start dealing in especially uh, uh, points of progression, you're going to get a lot of things that change, a lot of things that can be stressful, a lot of things that can be unplanned, and if you're not in the right responsive state to a lot of change, you can flip out quick. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So that's the thing I think a lot of times people don't be mentally prepared for like, look, you know, just you ain't gonna be ready for everything. True. Some stuff gonna happen. You know, we can only thing we can control, we can't control things that happen to us, but we can control how we react to the situation. Okay. That's the only thing we can control. Yeah. I can't control if, you know, you know, the government say all taxes are free. 
The government say we ain't gonna give you no more VA disability. I might fall out. <laughs> oh no, not my VA disability. Disability check. Right, right. Payday of the day, matter of fact. <laughs> I always on time on the first. I can't if they say it goes, what can I say? Right. I can control my response. But you can nut up a little bit. Well, what, what you know, even when they say it, I can nut up for a little bit, but the next move gotta be what what you gonna do next, Poochie. Right. And I think a lot of times people dwell so much on the happening instead of what they got to do next. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think a lot of times it can set you back. Now, depending on where you try to go in life, again, it's not talking about it, it's just being realistic. If you just want to have a, a steady path in your mind, by this, I just want to do this, I'm not really so big on change, that's fine. The flip side of it is that you're, you're, you're going to be set still in a reactive state. You know, because there's a lot of folks. What did the world? 28,000 on a uh, on, uh, Tuesday. Disney World, Disneyland in California laid off 28,000. Yeah. 28,000 people. Yeah, they say more coming. Come on now. And you see how these other companies are coming. How many of us were planning cruises in January? Mm -hmm. Now, let's say December. Man, this thing called Corona done came. It done changed the game. Right. I mean, restaurants, clubs, and all this kind of stuff. And it really, depending on how you react with everything, how it is. Mm -hmm. Some bars, you know, you got some bars just shut down all together, never to be seen again. Some mm -hmm. of them start making that little nasty takeout menu. <laughs> <laughs> but they responded. Right. Exactly. You know, they, they responded. They to change. I, right? I, 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 there you go. We adapt and we can overcome. We're like, we ain't really a restaurant, but... <laughs> But you, you, you and those are the kind of things you got to do to be able to survive, mm -hmm. because unless you live up on the rock, the world is going to change. You Every know, day. yeah. Going to my twenty years ago, nobody expected us to be using these phones in the capacity that we're using them now. Mm -hmm. Nobody expected us. You know, again, you're talking about uh, email from the point that you had to write letters, try to get in contact with folks. Hell, even just text. Mm -hmm. Have the stuff you ain't got to worry about talking to somebody, and it's just. The whole way we communicate, the whole way we function and have it, everything's changed. Mm -hmm. Everything's changed in the world and stuff. And, again, it's going to keep changing and everything. I think about that, what you was just saying about the phones. Remember, we used to watch those sci-fi movies, and they'd be talking to each other with the video to the phone back in, back in the early, early, late 70s, early 80s. They'd be mm -hmm. talking to each other on their phone, but they'd be video. Mm -hmm. We didn't think we'd be doing that either. Look at us. But me, me and Slick <laughs> always say, if it's in the movie, it's, it's, it's real. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> if you can think it, it's possible. Right, right. And uh, we all know the human mind has no limits. And right. that's the thing about it. So if, it, if it's thought of and everything, you know, it's probably going to be, you know, it's, it, it's coming. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think no one's really limited with anything. And I just think that the way you choose to respond to changes in the world and the way you choose to adapt to it, that's going to be a determining factor on how your life is going to be, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, you, you got some folks, they cool still having their flip phone. Mm -hmm. Now, again, I don't know what hell half the stuff they can do, and they limit it, but, again, they just, that's just how that is. They just like it better. And, and, and that's the thing about it. You know, you just have to be responsive to that, you know. I know some people out here still got a VHS uh, tape player. <laughs> I'm not I got you with that one then. <laughs> No, <laughs> yeah. Remember the beta ones? Beta yeah, ones beta. came out first. Yeah, with uh, the pop up. Yeah, 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 yeah. My buddy had one pop up screen and pop up at the top. Right. And everything, man. Yeah. I don't know if nobody got one of those, but they days so, you know. But it, you know, I wouldn't even be surprised though. But I just think about it. We just have to be responsible, be able to adapt with certain things. But that's why we had a show tonight. So we want to talk about being comfortable, being uncomfortable. Because I, again, I want to give you guys my blueprint on how to, you know, adjust your life. If you have any kind of issues with being responsive, being reactive to any kind of sudden change or things being different. But the first thing I want to do is kind of go over, you know, really what makes people uncomfortable. Again, this is Change Live. It's by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Make sure you go to the YouTube and Facebook uh, page. Subscribe to both. You know, Change Live, we talk about uh, motivation, personal development, and uh, professional development. I don't know why I keep wanting to say Mr. Short Dollar. <laughs> that was last week. That was yeah. last week. <laughs> well, I mean, but I'm in go mode. I'm in go mode. Right. But yeah, we've been uh, uh, uh man, we've been rolling, man. We've been rolling, man. I mean, I talk about the end of the show, man. Both of the pages, they doing, you know, change live got a little bump, man. But that Mr. Short Dollar is shooting. Really? And it's smoking, man. It's smoking. And it's like I do with everybody supporting, and, you know, what you guys are doing, helping me and everything. I appreciate it too. But um, 
with tonight again we're talking about being comfortable being on un- being comfortable being uncomfortable and what i want to go over first is really what i feel like what makes people uncomfortable my my four things what makes people uncomfortable and that is number one your mentality not planning not being prepared for something the confidence you have in yourself and lastly <laughs> talent just your damn capability capacity with certain things again okay. those are the four things that really make people uncomfortable being the, uh, the mentality not preparing or planning, confidence, and overall talent, okay? Let's kind of break those down. When you start looking at your mentality, I think a lot has to do with just the attitude, attitude that you come out with. Mm-hmm. Are you going to have to have an open mind? Are you going to be closed-minded? Are you going to be listening? Don't want to hear and everything? A negative attitude really stunts so much of what you're trying to do. And a lot of times when people uh, uh, don't try to attempt to do certain things, a lot got to do with just how... That attitude is. Your attitude is probably one of the major barriers that hinder a lot of folks in life. Mm-hmm. You know, you ain't got to be all happy-go-lucky. You ain't got to be, you know, hey, this that ain't got to be you. Mm-hmm. But your outlook on how you deal with things got a lot to do with stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, you can be the person that's quiet and reserving to yourself and still take on challenges and move forward and don't necessarily fall apart when things don't go your way. We're all human. I'm not saying when things don't go wrong, when things go wrong for me or things don't go right, I don't have any feelings. But I make a conscious decision on how long I'm going to dwell about it. Mm-hmm. Hell, I've been down here with lab and when it's sofa sometime after the show, hey, <laughs> like I'm in the damn Dr. Phil session. Right. But I cannot let that own my life. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you get that moment, you know, find yourself some good friends, find you a tree, a brick, or whatever. Um, Tom Hanks was on, what was the cast? What was his name? Waldo. What was his name? Waldo. Waldo. He was there with Waldo. Oh, by away. The, yeah, yeah, the, the ball. Oh, Wilson. Yeah. Wilson. Wilson. Yeah. Waldo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tom Hanks and Wilson had some good conversations. Right. I think people don't take into account hobbies. A lot of people don't have hobbies. You got to have a hobby. I mean, a friend is good, too. But you really, a lot of people really need to have some kind of hobby. Something they can do and get away from everybody. and just It's just them and that. A lot of people don't have hobbies. It, it, it helps clear the mind, you know. It just help refocus a little bit. Step away from the work. Step away from the business, the family, and just do what you like to do for a sec. I, I absolutely agree. Well, j- you know, just keeping it real, uh, mental health isn't valued in the, uh, the black community mm-hmm. as much as it should be. Because we all got stressors and stuff like that, and we have that combination of we don't want to address it, uh, ego, uh, you know, with men it could be masculinity. Mm-hmm. Women may not necessarily, you know, they may divert it on something else. And people just don't want to just approach, hey, man, something wrong with me. I don't, you know, I, I, I need I to sit down. Right, right. Yeah, and they don't want to approach it the right way. And, again, you know, elite don't go away because you, you know, close the cabinet. <laughs> Shit. That damn thing going to do one thing, get worse. <laughs> and so you, you choose if you're going to fix the pipe or you're going to let that damn thing bust. So uh, uh, that first one, mentality. I think everyone needs to take a little time to kind of look at, you know, address, you know, how they perceive certain things and stuff like that. And your whole outlook and your perception a lot of, on a lot of issues can be a determining factor of how you better do it. Again, we're talking about the things that uh, uh, that make people uncomfortable. That first one being mentality. The second one is uh, not planning and not being prepared. Here's the deal, man. Anytime you ain't really took the time or do anything, you know, that, that you, especially for something that's new, you're not going to have the same – comfort level mm-hmm. that you would if you didn't i mean if you're a seasoned vet doing a job certain times you can go in with your eyes closed doing it and everything but we all remember that first day on the job right <laughs> we all remember that first day at the school right. you didn't right. know anything and stuff and it's very uncomfortable it's very uncomfortable because again you're not only trying to learn something you're trying to get adapted to your environment mm-hmm. and a lot of times people just you know when you go into situations, again, you have those people that are just ultra confident. It doesn't matter where they at, but they fall in few between. But most of us, when we haven't had a chance to prepare and talk uh, to do certain things, it ain't going to work right. Mm-hmm. I think I tend to uh, – I'm always confident when I do my shows, but I know when I ain't prepared like I have. Some of them are like, okay, smooth. My uh, stuttering may be a little bit more prevalent right. on some shows and stuff that I haven't prepared for and everything. I know the stuff, but if I ain't talked in the mirror a couple times – kind of went over my points and stuff like that. I know it. 
Especially when I, well, I can't do it on no speaking gig because that's my money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to talk that damn mirror. That is time. PJ will tell you, I'm talking in the mirror, recording myself. <laughs> you know, they be in my audience making faces. No. But those are the kind of things you got to kind of do to yourself to make yourself comfortable, especially mm -hmm. in uh, adverse or uh, uh, uncomfortable situations and stuff like that. But that being, like I said, that poor planning and not necessarily being prepared, those are the kind of things. You know, you had to do them presentations. You ain't really looked over your notes. You got a game or work or something like that. Anything that you had to do mm -hmm. that you know you haven't really – Made a, yeah, it made a conscious effort to get ready for it. Okay. And you feel like, oh, damn, it could be so much better if I had to do this. Because you still may do it, but how can I put it? When you're really, one of my teachers in high school told me, he said, Mr. Burden, when you are really, really ready for a test, you're so confident and hyped about it, you're just ready to get it over. Yeah. When you didn't study, you're like, man, you looking at the <laughs> clock, kind of cringing in your five seat. Five minutes for this test damn. <laughs> and everything you try to figure all kind of ways, rubbing your stomach, <laughs> try like you sick with it. <laughs> but when you're confident, you know your stuff, man. Look, let's do it. Let's go. Yeah, I was and always everything. infamous for um, when I was in college, wait till the last minute to study for the exam. I'd be like, my best work last minute. And I do, and I did well last minute. I think it was for me, it was the, the prep pressure of, of prepping for it the whole time. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll give you. They would give you two or three weeks, you know, that, hey, you know, you're going to have an exam on such and such, such day. And yeah. I was working. I already had kids and a wife. Yeah. I, so if it was on April 12th, I started studying on April 10th. <laughs> <laughs> but you made it happen. <laughs> but I always passed. Mm. I started studying because my problem is retaining. Mm. If I study for it too early out, and I know this, I'm going to start being I'm gonna start being unconfident about what I know when it's time for the test. You get what I'm saying? Got you. When the 12 come, when 11 come, like, I don't even know if I know that no more. Uh -huh. So that's when my confidence level goes away right there. I can dig it. I can dig it. I do want to make one little point. Brother, I heard you say you do your best late. <laughs> I don't think that was your best. I thought you just were late. I thought I always felt you could have did so much more. <laughs> you know, we will just agree to disagree. Right. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always remember, boy, your father know you better know yourself. And uh, you probably could have got an A plus. Oh man, <laughs> it wasn't always no A, so don't even flex like that. <laughs> but again, that 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 you know, being not being the most prepared, not being the most ready, that's that second thing that you know to get makes people uncomfortable. The third thing that makes people uncomfortable is confidence. You know, here's the deal with confidence: is that a lot of folks sound loud. Mm, a lot of it sound loud. loud and that can be just a defense mechanism to kind of you know not get called upon or whatever but how many of us truly 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 believe in themselves you know it's funny you know before the big shout out to my son Chris Burton I see you just tuned in Chris you had an awesome game mm -hmm. I just want I told your mom to tell you I just want to tell yourself boy you did good out there yeah. I, I ain't had a chance Chris Chris be you look good I'm going to tell you that but ironically I just had the game talking to one more brother-in-law's and uh, me and him were just rapping, talking about in regards to how athletes are, you know, people sit there and say that athletes, even anyone, they'll say, okay, I feel like I should get paid this. I feel like I should make this. And they're truly, truly confident in that. And I always say that here's the they feel like they're truly confident. And I've always been a firm believer in that you are what you can command. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you should be getting $100 an hour, two, $300 an hour, that means folks are willing to pay you that. Now, if people ain't willing to pay you that, you I mean, that's just in your candy <laughs> land. And a lot of times you hear athletes that, you know, I'm just thinking of athletes, but you're professionals more than anybody, saying, I won't work for this, I won't work for that, and I, you know, I got to get paid this, I got to get paid that. But if you could command those kinds of money, you wouldn't be looking. You already be getting it, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, Lebr LeBron case. gets the red carpet as soon as his contract is up. Yeah, you get, you know. He don't have to worry about it. He don't have a job what, tomorrow. And, and I, ain't, I, ain't, I, ain't, I mean, I'm, I ain't trying to make this about myself. I mean, when I left corporate America, I got three. I got one CFO and two finance director position officers from headhunters. Three weeks. I ain't applied for nothing. It just, you know, came. Mm -hmm. You know, it just came and everything. I don't know where it come from, but it came. I only say this to say this. Like I said, I want to make this about, about me, but I just feel like, Regardless, if you feel like you're that type of person and you really truly know it, you know, I mean, not that you want it 
or you want to try to think you should get that. No. But if you truly know it, it's going to happen because people are offering you that. Mm-hmm. A lot of times people have a false sense of security. And they're not as comfortable. They say they are. They lie. They'll say they should get this. But when you truly believe that you are a certain way and you can do certain things, your movement's going to be that way. You're mm-hmm. not going to compromise that. Mm-hmm. You're not going to compromise that. Say, man, I ain't into that. I ain't going to do that kind of stuff no more or whatever. And it's not that you're looking at it from an arrogant standpoint. It's more from a genuine awareness standpoint, mm-hmm. you know. And that's the thing about it. When you start becoming a business owner, you learn that you start working on the business instead of in the business. I can't get caught up a lot of time doing certain taxes mm-hmm. because I got to figure out more ways to get more clients. Right. I got to find more ways for people to do these dang loans. Mm-hmm. I can't be caught up into that because I got to find more ways to do that. And that's the same thing. When you actually are confident and that confidence that you know it, it's a different thing. But a lot of times people, they they want or aspire to do a certain thing, but that confidence is not real. Oh, no, absolutely not. You know, and everything. You know, it's just like you, you see the little chihuahua. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Right, right. wah, wah. And you just stomp on the ground. That's your shot, goal. Shoot off, yeah. Wah, wah, it's still here. It'll get about 30 feet and then wah, wah, back at you. <laughs> You know, but that rock just going to look at you all there. <laughs> okay, let me let me go. I ain't going to feel it. going to get your. He might mess around and throw one damn tooth out. Uh. You sure? <laughs> nah. Nah, I'll rob your neighbor. Right. Nah, I ain't going to break your house. I'll go to your neighbor's house. <laughs> and that's just, you know, that confidence. Again, we're talking about things that make people uncomfortable. That was the third thing, being confidence. And the fourth one is just a... Uh, Overall talent. I mean, realistic. Are you even capable of doing this task? Can you <laughs> remotely accomplish it at all? And a lot of times, people, you're not necessarily. You're gonna be uncomfortable. If you know, like, look, man, this is a something I can't do. Not that you're even quitting, but you know, kind of like you're looking at that. I don't want to get confidence and you know, uh, uh, talent confused. Talent, just some things you just can't do. I was looking at the, that game today. I was just looking like, hey, man, I think this is a drop off in talent. I. Th- Looking at my Atlanta Falcons, mm-hmm. I think they got some glaring talent issues. <laughs> like I don't, I, you know, some of the stuff might even be effort. They may care about doing it, right. but just some of them guys just can't run with them other boys. <laughs> it just can't it's happen. <laughs> it just can't happen. You know, like me in the NBA, it right. just ain't gonna work. It's not, it's not it, no anything problem. outside of me handing out towels, <laughs> I ain't gonna work. And get yeah, there you go. Uh, uh, there you go. It ain't gonna work. <laughs> what the hell are you doing now? You gonna what? No. But 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 it may be people still feel like, shoot, I can do anything I put my mind to. If I want to be an NBA, I can be an NBA. People say that all the time. I'm one of them people who say it. I say, man, I'm only five seven. I can dunk on you now. Well, I might not do it, but I feel like I can. Well, that's great. That's great to do that. But when we, we start talking about, we, we again, you know, when we, we, we and, and that's the thing about it. If your confidence, you your belief in yourself can override that, that's fine. But when you start looking at when we say being uncomfortable, I'm talking about. You just say you got a major task you got to take care of, and you need a crew of ten. Mm-hmm. You got two people like, man, we really can't. Do, we need more people. Okay, we can do this. But we can't do it in the time frame you want us to do it. Okay, okay. You know, okay, you know, and everything. We're talking about just, just when you being, we're talking about making you, we're talking about being uncomfortable. And you're looking at it in terms of just from a talent, capacity standpoint. Man, I know how to do those taxes, but I don't really do that yeah, yeah. intense corporate law. Now, I've said You know, and everything well, like that. I've said that. But you know? something that was asked of me, I was like, man, I, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't replace that. I don't know how to do that. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. And that's why when you go to a, when you go to your regular uh, primary doctor and something is uh, above their level, what they do? Refer you to a specialist. Mm-hmm. They don't make them any less than a doctor. And damn sure still going to be like a doctor. But what I'm saying <laughs> that, again, like, listen, I get it, but that we're going to send you to this neurologist. We're going to see to this person, that person, and everything because they know that lane. And I think a lot of times... When we enter in a situation like that, we're not smart enough to just admit our limitations or admit like, hey, that's not really what we do. That's when you see them kind of lapses in a, a in belief in ourselves and just knowing, okay, we're going to get uncomfortable. But we're trying to get into missions and tasks that we really can't even take care of. Mm-hmm. That's why I say from an actual talent or capacity standpoint, like, look, that's just not, you know, we, we can't do. And um, it's nothing wrong with not attempting. There's nothing wrong with, you know, sometimes they want to get a try, see if I can do it. But sometimes you just still 
just it ain't meant for you to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, for every two steps you make, they're making three or four. Mm -hmm. And it's just like whatever happened. You know, it, 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 you're fighting a losing battle. You ain't quitting, but you may just need to get in another race. Right. And people sometimes just can't, you know, figure that one out. But again, we're talking about the things that can make people uncomfortable. And those four things that I've stated was number one being your mentality, the second being prepared or planning for a certain thing, the third one having just overall confidence in yourself, and the third one is just, you know, I mean, the fourth one uh, rather is just, you know, your capacity or your talent to be able to get a task done. Again, this is Change Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Change Your Lives. Also, go to the Facebook. You can follow me also at Instagram at Deontay underscore 77 on Instagram. And also hit me up on TikTok at Change Your Lives. Your boy is everywhere you want to find me at. Everywhere you need to be. Anywhere I need to be and right, everything. Right. <laughs> and, um, but now we're going into, like, you know, when I just started looking at, uh, those things as far as, you know, we just address the things that can cause you to be uncomfortable. Okay. Okay, we look at that. Okay, these are the things that can cause people to have issues and that. What's going on, Sabrina? Those, those things cause people to have those setbacks. Now, right, we want to sit here and say to ourselves, well, look, what are the characteristics that I need as an individual to not let my shortcomings or things that, you know, that, that make me uncomfortable hold me back? Again, we're talking tonight about being comfortable, being uncomfortable. So now I want to give you guys my blueprint on the characteristics you need to be able to to overstep those those things, those uh, those four things that can cause you to be uncomfortable. Okay, and the first one is I think, and you know me being former military, this is one of my backbones, and that's a uh, mental toughness. You have to be mentally prepared to fight in battle. You have to be. You got to kind of callous your mind. To understand things ain't gonna work the way you want to be, mm -hmm. and a lot of times people just aren't mentally tough enough to handle certain situations. Mm -hmm. You got to sit there and just understand things gonna happen. Right. And I think if you go into situations with the thought process, not if something happens, more so when it happens, you'll better handle things a lot better. Mm, okay. Because if your outlook is like if it happens, you're hoping it's not. Right. So it's more like. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Mm -mm. No. Not hope for the best, prepare for the worst. You just still just prepare. Hell for the bad stuff gonna happen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't give a damn what the man saying gonna rain. Take your damn umbrella with you. Okay. Have it. You know we used to go to the. Um, you know I, people laugh at me. You hear me say it all the time. Laugh. That was one of my sergeants in uh Sergeant Jones. When I was in Germany, we go to the field. We only had. We only need three tents. We taking fifteen. 15. Taking all the extra poles. He always kept hitting in my head. Best to need, have and not need and need and not have. Okay, okay. And like I said, having that whole outlook changed a lot of things for me in my life. Because, again, it's not that you hoping things don't happen. You're just like, okay, you know, when it happens and everything. And if it don't happen, you still are prepared anyway. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have everything covered? Absolutely not. But you're actually in a, in a mind frame where you're like, okay, you're being preparing yourself mentally for things that the things that things are going to happen mm -hmm. if it happens or not or even some of the things that you wouldn't even think about happen you get you still have yourself in a more defensive state okay they're like okay when it ha you know what happens and stuff and that's not to halt you out but you just roll them like that as opposed to you just thinking it's going to be all easy breezy then something happens and you just can't even recover from it mm -hmm. so that's the thing but you gotta be a little bit more mentally tough thicker skin uh, uh just have your mind frame together that okay Things are going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like I say, it's not if it's happened, it's when it happens. And when it happens, you'll be prepared for it, okay? okay. The second thing is uh, you got to have great self-awareness. And that's the thing about it. We talk about this live, so I tell people all the time, do what? Do them personal assessments of yourself. Knowing yourself is key. Mm -hmm. And being honest with yourself is key. A lot of times we know what shortcomings we got. We know we get tired easy. We know we lose focus quick. We know if we temperamental, we get mad and all that kind of stuff. We uh, bring it up, but we never do what? Do anything to kind of correct it. Right. Or playing around if something exposes it or makes it worse than what it is, how are we going to be able to handle it? Right. you got to have great self-awareness to know what kind of person you are. And, again, also kind of just be able to plan around how if things – negatively affect your personality or negatively affect the way you are, how are you going to be able to adjust to it? 
Okay. You know, especially if you know you got temper issues, if you have a lot of issue with fears and stuff like mm-hmm. that, you got to sit here and just say, okay, look, this is how I'm going to get around it. If I know I don't like dealing with, you know, a lot of people and I got to deal in this group project, how am I going to be able to handle this? How am I going to be able to do it? What are the things I'm going to have to work on, the things I'm going to have to do to protect myself and also protect this project and the people that I'm getting into? How are we going to be able to do that? Right. You know, that's a lot of fun. I hear all the time. I don't like working with people. I'm like, well, how the hell? What, what are you going to work in a cave? <laughs> you know? Yeah, and, a, and a lot of times people. Only if. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> you know. And it's, a not, and it's not a right or wrong way. It's just that it would be cool if we could script how we're going to go about everything in life and stuff, right. you know? Right. But that's one of the key things. You got to have that great self awareness, know what kind of person you are, and be able to plan about those challenges that may come up in life. If they're going to trigger, and it's not a negative way you are, but trigger some of the ways that can kind of be perceived as being negative, perceived as being unfavorable, what could you do to kind of mitigate or protect yourself so it's not looked upon in a, in a, in a in bad, bad way, way, you know, right. or it affects you in a kind of adverse way and everything? Well, Deontay snapped on me and all that kind of stuff. And I knew I knew this guy would, would poke at me. I know he says stuff that's below the belt. Why not just avoid him? Mm. Why not just let the stuff go over my head? Instead of assuming the first time you say something, I'm just out of it. Right. You can't do that. You know how you are. Mm-hmm. And you can't say, well, I got a temper problem. I'm not give a damn. <laughs> you know, it, it, it just ain't going to fly. And yeah, but you got to be able to do that. Again, we're talking about the characteristics you need. To be able to uh, overcome being uncomfortable, okay. And the third one is resiliency. Um, you got to be able to be responsive to stress and change. Mm-hmm. You have to be able to, you know, regardless of how you feel and stuff. Um, I just said a little bit earlier in the show. Stress and pain and all that stuff it hits me just like it hits the next person. I think I'm one of the few people that uh, I just don't stay in the bed a week behind it. Mm-hmm. I might be banged up for a day or so. And everything, and that's kind of max. Mm-hmm. After that, they get back on top of it, you know. And I, I think just think it, I think it takes me a day or two or three uh-huh. because I got to figure out the way around. I can't. I'm not the type of person who's gonna be able to c- have a stressful situation and know exactly what to do right then. I got to figure it out for a second, and then once I figure it out, then okay, let's get back on it. But I am gonna take a minute to figure it out first. And there's it, it, nothing wrong with that as long as you figure it out. Right. The thing with it is we got to make sure that we don't uh, we don't empower the pain. We mm-hmm. don't empower the stress by, you know, running away from it. Run away from, you know, anything that's you know, can cause us any more pain, any more setbacks and stuff like that. Because at the end of the day, we all want to make sure we're going to be, you know, in a good situation. Mm-hmm. Nobody want to be banged up. Nobody want to be sitting there arguing with folks are miserable. But you the one got to make a conscious decision like, look, man, I ain't finna let this stuff rule my life. Mm-hmm. I ain't finna let that do that. And we all, you know, we all had our moments and stuff. Though I say it, you can have some good friends, go vent to them, find you a good tree or branch, you know, and everything and stuff. Hell, I would be probably got a damn app. You know? <laughs> they do. <laughs> you know, it's there called you go. mental. There you go. It is. It's an app called mental. It's supposed to calm you down and help you relax and, and stress, relieve the stress. Well, you see that you just got the free plug, mental app, <laughs> and DJ Lab, That's right. and everything. So you, uh, uh, those are the kind of things you got. You just got to, you know, be be resilient and and, and understand that. Listen, I got to be able to bounce back from certain things. You can use other people to bounce back too. Like me personally, not to put Slick's business in, but she deals with pain a lot. And if she can get up and go, why the hell I can't get up? And you know what I'm saying? Because my pain level is not near as much as her pain level. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I got to get, I, if she going to push it, I'm going to push it too. Well, you, 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 you're looking at uh, everybody's situation. You know, you're not looking at it in a negative way. You're looking mm-hmm. at it as inspiration. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing about it. Well, like you just said, like, do I can do? I need to just well, hush my mouth. <laughs> exactly. So however yeah. you can get any kind of inspiration, anything to bounce back, that's great. Yeah. And everything. You ain't doing it at nobody's expense. It's just, just, you know, being you seeing it, let me just, you know, fix myself and everything. Again, that third one being uh, resiliency. Mm-hmm. The fourth one, again, we're talking about things to be able to, uh, the characteristics you need to overcome being uh, uh, uncomfortable. And they're in no particular order. Excuse me, I don't think any one is more important than the other. I just think these are the kind of things you need to have in place for yourself to be able to overcome adverse and change where you're being uncomfortable so it doesn't sit there and just hold you hostage with doing it. These, again, these are the characteristics that you need to have 
to be able to, you know, overcome that. And the fourth one being leadership. You know, you need to be able to initiate taking in charge and not necessarily waiting on others. Okay. A lot of times, people wait around for somebody else to fix their problem. They wait around for the president. That's why we're in a situation now. President Trump's going to make us jobs. President Biden's going to do this, that, and that. I can tell you right now, Pooch Bird don't give a damn <laughs> about that. Uh, who going to be president. <laughs> I mean, when it comes to making my money, right. I don't give a damn. Right. Ain't no president finna dictate that with me. Whatever changes come, we just adjust. But ain't no damn body. I don't give a damn. <laughs> shit. Huh? I don't give a damn about who. You know, I care about being president. But them dictating about what the hell I'm going to do as far as you know where in hell. Right. You know, I mean, people really crying. Trump's going to bring us jobs. And Biden's got this plan. He got that plan. Well, they can't do it. You don't put your damn destiny in nobody else's hand. Right. You got to take leadership, take charge of your life. The only person, the only person, and you barely got control of them that you can control to any extent is yourself. Mm -hmm. It's yourself. Once you put your destiny and your control of your life in other people's hands, you just got to deal with it. That's it. You got to deal with it. And that's what we just said with leadership. If you got to get up early, you got to study more. You got to work late to make more money. Anything, personal sacrifices you got to do that you have to do, you know, for yourself, your family, or whatever, anything that's going to go to the advancement of you, just do it. You don't sit there and damn wait on nobody to create opportunities for you. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, they're going to try to keep us, you know, on the job and do this, that, and that. Uh, shit. <laughs> I've seen that movie before. I've seen it. I've, act, I've acted it. Hey, I've, I've, act, I've had a leading role in it, right. acting it. Shit, man, come on. People don't give a damn uh, uh, -uh. About, uh, uh about you. Exactly. You can you can have a, a mortgage, special needs child, sickness, all kind of thing. And they gonna always have hey. a reason why they gotta do it more. Well, they may have, <laughs> if they give you the damn reason. Yeah, right. If they give you the reason. But if it comes down to profits and losses and whatever, they're making their money, you got to go. Got to go. <laughs> to go. Well, my baby needs this medicine. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Call Jill down to HR. You know, they may have some programs for you guys, you know. Yeah. You know everything. You go down to the Department of Labor or whatever. They don't give a damn. Now, it happened to them, you know, they're jumping off the damn 14th floor. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's the thing about it. I just, I, I, I don't think it's wise. I don't like using words stupid. Uh, shout out to my boy Josh Humphrey. He always say the opposite of wise. And uh, <laughs> I don't think it's wise to be sitting down waiting for people to do certain things for your life. Now, you can sit here and do what you're doing and in conjunction with what other people are doing and stuff like that. It may be in a uh, leadership role as far as dealing with your job or certain, certain situations. But I'm very, very big on controlling your own destiny. Mm -hmm. Nobody, er, everybody ain't got to be no business owner. Everybody ain't got to be no entrepreneur. But everybody better be the damn boss of themselves. Right. I don't give a damn about no, about no business or whatever. You better damn be the boss of yourself and be the damn boss of your family. Because mm -hmm. that's one damn job you lose. Your ass might not ever get that damn thing back. So I'm just saying, you, you can't afford not to have any kind of leadership or anything in your personal life. Mm -hmm. And I just think a lot of times people, they just give it up. They give it up. And, 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 and you know, I, I can't even go to the whole point of being afraid or scared. Shit, you got to be more afraid of what you can't control right. than what the hell you can try to be trying to do. Yeah. Again, and we're not talking about starting your own business. We're just talking about... Hey, man, are y'all going to give me this raise? Are y'all going to pay me? Are y'all going to move us? Are y'all going to change the schedule? I mean, just opening your mouth about things that can actually have an impact in your life. You're taking ownership of that, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. You know, making sure your kids study. Make sure all those kind of things that you can actually be in control of and lead a leading role in, people take a step back because they're what? Afraid of response. Because one thing about it, and I say this all the time, when you pull me to the side, you want to talk to me. And I do a lot with them parents. They want to talk about their kid. You got to understand. I might not agree with you. Right. So everything you say to your supervisor, your significant other, the other people, they can listen to it. But they may say some stuff you better be prepared to hear. for what you get. Right. You know, because you know, a lot of times I've seen people that have sat down and gave me a whole thing they thought about their son. Like, shit, I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. You talking about your son? Uh, no, not your No. <laughs> oh, hell no. You sure? Even in business, like, you know, I get, I mean, I, I get pictures all the time. 
I get pictures all the time. Man, I want you to do this business. We can do this business and all that kind of stuff. And the key ingredient, the whole pitch is what? How you going to pay me my money back? Right. That's the whole pitch. <laughs> That's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. And <laughs> more than what I gave you. I need a little interest man. on that. PJ, I tell conversation me I'm saying the other day, man. Man, you borrow for a man, get that shit back the way better than what you got it. Right. You borrow a man, call, you better get it back with a full tank and it been washed. Right. Get it back. You never know when you got to go back. That's it. You know, you just don't know. Yeah, and that's, that's just that's how you, you need to roll. That's how that's how we burdens roll. Look, you, I'm over the liver getting it back because you did not have to help me. Mm-hmm. And that's how, now, do I expect people to do that for me? No. But I'm going to think twice about it, but you know, you just gave my money back and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. I'm, I'm going to think twice about it. Right. And, but if I know you over the liver, I might just kind of like, okay, let me give it to him. Mm-hmm. The car do need wash. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or just, but just that whole premise that, you know, it's just kind of like an inner show of appreciation. You, you won't do the, uh, let me think about it. I got a couple things who let me call you back. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. It's not necessarily anything about it. It's just sometimes you just have to just kind of be thinking about it, what kind of things. I, I, just, I had a story, like, when I worked at my last job, I worked at, People always come to my office and say, you ain't got no pictures of your, of your family. You ain't got no pictures of nobody else. You ain't got no pictures of nothing. You just, it's just a plain old office. I say, yeah, because me, I'm not trying to be negative, but I'm, I'm being realistic. Well, so that way when they get ready to fire me, I ain't got, they ain't got shit nothing to me. I just grab my bag and go. <laughs> the, simplest, the simplest thing, that's what I can control. I can't control when they might decide to let us go. But I damn sure can control how fast I get up and cut that corner. <laughs> and it's cold how they how they let you go. Yeah, yeah, because they, 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 yeah, they, yeah, they do it, and, <laughs> and they have security. What the hell is security right. out there for? And right. everything and stuff. They drop that bomb. Me like what? You don't know. They don't even want to know your opinion. How right. you feel? Mm. <laughs> well, I've been there. Enough but, for we'll ship the stuff out. Oh, don't mm. worry about that. Ain't nothing in here, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. I got my bag right here on my back. I'm out. All right. Again, we're talking about the five uh, categories you need to be able to handle being uh, uncomfortable. Again, tonight's show, we're talking about being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And we're at number five, and I think number five is by far the most important. And it's really just, you know, being able to embrace adversity. Uh, never shine away from stress or change. We don't, we don't want to be uncomfortable. We don't want to get in any kind of unasked for change or things that we didn't want, want to deal with prior to a certain situation. But again, you just got to be able to roll with it. Mm-hmm. That's your life. That's just life. And again, like I said, unless you're staying up, in, up on a rock or living in a cave, things are going to change in your life. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to, you know, as long as you, my uncle told me the one time he's dead and gone, that my uncle John Lee he told me, you know, he said, you know, you ain't got no health problems. He just said, keep living. Mm. Shit. Okay. <laughs> that was some motivation. You know keep living. He said, keep living. You're going to get something going wrong with you. And that's the kind of thing about it. We don't, you don't know what kind of hand you're going to get dealt. You can go out and be a, a workout phenom. Next thing you know, you got diagnosed with this. Mm-hmm. Or you came down with that. What the hell, I ate and did all the things I was supposed to do. Right. And, and the only thing you can control is what? How you respond to that adversity. Mm-hmm. That's it. You can't. Anything else, what the hell can you do? Right. What the hell can you do? Nothing. Complain. And I just think far too often people just don't want to accept what they can't control and want to do what blaming on other folks and stuff so mm-hmm. the way you be able to uh, uh embrace adversity is going to be a major component in terms of you know how you being able to you know to overcome being uncomfortable again we just talked about the five characteristics that you need to help you you know overcome being uncomfortable and the first being mental toughness the second being having a great self-awareness of yourself the third one is, is uh having a good sense of resiliency Fourth being, you know, leadership, being able to take control of yourself, be able to take control of your actions and any way you think. And the fifth being embracing adversity, how you embrace the different changes and different setbacks you have in life. And, uh, you know, even just look a little deeper into just being able to handle adversity. A couple points I just want to give everybody with just being able to do that because I think that's a, with this past year, there were so many things that hit people over you had the pandemic you had to get sick yeah where am i getting uh dying then you damn turn around where am i if you're gonna keep your job have your job cut hours mm-hmm. you know certain damn. you know make you know all kind of stuff yeah, yeah exactly all kind of stuff just coming out and so i just want to give you a couple points and you know how you can help you handle adversities you know just let me just you know talking about it and you, you know really you know going back to thing i just said early focus on what you can do and not what you can't do also, you know, having the right attitude like we talked about before, planning, 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 
you know, if you're not really from sure on a certain thing, take ego out of the equation. Go seek some advice for a person that's been in that situation before. Mm -hmm. Talk to somebody. Talk to somebody from a counseling standpoint. Talk to somebody from an educating standpoint. Hey, man, you worked on somebody, worked in this place before. Hey, man, you was at your job. You got laid off after so many times. Listen, man, I know you got, you know, wife, kids and stuff like that. You went through some stuff. How did you get through that when you had lost your job and stuff? Talk to people. Mm -hmm. Are they always going to talk back to you? No. But a lot of times, and people have went through something that kind of was impactful in their life. They don't mind sharing it because you know what? They don't want nobody else going through that shit. That's true. And they don't want nobody else going through it. And at the end of the day, hey, you're going through hell. What the, what the hell is it going to hurt you? <laughs> exactly. You're still hot. <laughs> you know? And most importantly, guys, kind of like what I said before, uh, take action. Don't wait for nobody for things just to change and happen. You know? Mm -hmm. The world rewards the person that takes control of their life. The person that sits there and try to do things for themselves, the world rewards you. And when you don't, you just gonna have to wait for things to happen and stuff. And again, you just can't. You can, but you gotta be realistic about that. Mm -hmm. Are things gonna happen at the pace I want? Are things gonna happen the way I want it to be? And nine times out of ten is not. Nine times out of ten is not gonna happen, and everything. Uh, again, tonight's show was being comfortable, being uncomfortable. I hope the the show was pretty informative to you guys. As always, when we post the videos on YouTube. We have the links and stuff. The links should be on the Facebook page as well. Um, and everything give you guys a quick recap be on the lookout for the courses and everything all the promo information should be coming out within the next couple of days also remember you can go to the wda investments that's my private equity firm we've been issuing our different loan products for the well since march of uh this year but we're going full throttle with the different business products so make sure you like uh, the wda page or you can look me up on the web at wda-invest.com again that's wda-invest.com um uh, you can get more information about the company and even the products that we got. Also, remember, guys, you know, B Fan Publishing now. Make sure you can get some of that fly merchandise. So make sure you like B Fan pu Publishing on uh, Facebook. We got our different merchandise from Changing Lives. We got my book. We'll have some of the Mr. Short Dollar Gear coming out soon. And also that Nubian Christmas line be coming out in a couple of weeks from the man, Madame Burden store. Don't worry about where it came from. It's just here. <laughs> <laughs> Lab be giving me hell. <laughs> The beat don't it's stop, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Cooch French. It's French. <laughs> <laughs> Creole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's Southern French, something else, ain't right, it? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be damned. But um, guys, I do want to just briefly say I will give a big big thank you to uh, DJ Lab and Slick 316. I'm going to tell you something. If you uh, haven't been... Uh, Checking out all the different shows on Misfits Radio, Misfits Media Group, you're really cheating yourself because every day of the week it's a different show coming on and everybody bringing a different thing to the table. And all of us coming around on it around about the same time at 8 o'clock and everything. And I want you guys to support Misfits Radio, support Misfits Media Group. You guys have changed my life and everything like that because, you know, everybody don't be poochy. I never knew how to shut the hell up. They actually got a platform. To uh -oh. do this? Oh, <laughs> shit. It's over now. <laughs> and just being able to do that has been great and see other people doing and stuff like that. Again, every day of the week, you got a different show popping. And I want you guys to make sure you go to Misfits Radio uh, to look at the different shows. Check out everybody's shows. Surprise to their, uh, uh, subscribe to their platforms as well. And just to, uh, support the family and everything. Because I can just tell you right now, these people here, that everybody's A1. And they really been big on they've been big on my growth and everybody else that been affiliated with them. So I want you guys to make sure check out Misfits Media, uh, Misfits Radio, and everything. I got it both right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. That's okay. Right. We appreciate and you. and everything. No, nah, no, nah, I appreciate y'all. So guys, make sure you do that and everything. So it's not even just about checking out, changing lives, or Mr. Short Dollar. Just look at what everything you know what, what's going on. Cause I seen Jacinta, she was figuring it out with a book, and now she's figuring out cooking. <laughs> hey, it's about, it's about <laughs> evolution, right? I was like, wow. Now, that's we, a damn pity. We told you to figure out cooking. I <laughs> said, see, see, look at her. She just be damn throwing shit up and different angles in the kitchen and shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> but, again, I got comedy shows in there. The comedy show was last night. Every day of the week is a different show. So, again, if you guys, 8 o'clock. Misfits Radio is where you guys need to be, okay? So make sure you support my radio family, okay? Again, be on the lookout for the courses. Go to the WDA Investments uh, Facebook page. Check us out at WDA-Invest.com. 
Be on the lookout for the courses for Mr. Short Dollar and everything. The best thing you to do, make sure you look at uh all my Facebook page from uh Mr. Short Dollar, Change Lives, WD Investment, hit B Fan Publishing up. Um and, and just support support everything you got because I try to go out of my way to not be out here asking you guys for money or doing certain things. I try to over deliver to help everybody. And in the process, you know, I try to eat a little bit, just a little <laughs> just bit. Just a little bit. And everything in the process. But m most importantly, if you kind of look at it, you know, hey, we got almost over 200 videos on changing lives. And we ain't got hardly nowhere near the products we should have, regardless of that, mainly because I was just worried about, you know, the development and growth of you guys, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, support everything we're doing out here for you because, you know, number one, it's generally for you guys. And we need it also to make sure we continue to deliver all these great products and all these great shows to you guys as well. Listen, you know next week going to be another show from Mr. Short Dollar and everything. Also, again, here's the thing. We've hit the month of September, exceeded my goals. When I left to go to the game today, Mr. Short Dollar was at 1,691 subscribers. All right, all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> and this is natural. Right. And I'm going to tell you what I said to myself. Two Two things, two things I was going that I made a promise to myself. Give a big shout out one of my uh, high school girlfriends. I ain't gonna say her name, but I noticed that she did a challenge of thirty one days of exercising. Okay. So I said, you know what, I'm gonna do that and top it. Okay. For the month of October, I'm gonna work out every day. Okay. But I'm also also gonna make a video for Change Lives and Mr. Short Dollar every day for the month of October. Okay. That was my challenge to myself. So I seen him do that, and that inspired me to do that. And so, uh, uh, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. Somebody didn't check. <laughs> you ain't a fan here. God. Huh? You better ask your brothers. You're going to see me in a bit if you wake up at 12 o'clock every day. And, uh, uh, whoa. Whoa. No, you better ask your brothers. No, I, trust me, I worked out today. And, and with that said, you know, again, I want to give a, Big shout out my son, Chetney Burton Jr., PJ Burton. Uh, I want to tell you again, brother, you ain't never disappointed me. You always made me, you know, you know, very super excited. Even when you were that big coming out your mama, I was very excited. And that was that it threw me off guard, but I was just like, okay. And from that moment, you have never, ever disappointed me with anything you did in life and everything. <laughs> you know? I had to throw that in. I'm saying all this BS. Father, BS, he came out. <laughs> and everything. The first couple of seconds after you born, boy, you quiet. We're like, I hope he ain't damn dead. That doctor <laughs> slapped you hard enough you woke up. Okay, cool. Right. And he has not shut the hell up since. <laughs> and uh, but but you have never gave me one moment. You have made me proud of you, and not made me proud to say, you know, you know, uh, that's my son. And also have done a whole lot more with my name than I ever did. And I know you're gonna do a whole lot more. So I want to just tell you good luck with everything. Be talking to you. You can leave him Monday. We'll be talking. For some time after that, and I know that you're going to do more and more exciting things and stuff. I can't tell you how proud I am, you know, of you, PJ, okay? And I love you, bro. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we are time. proud of you as well. We ain't known you that long here at Misfits Radio, Misfits Media Group. But me and Slick, we proud of you because we always are proud to see young black men succeeding and moving forward in their lives. And we are so proud of you. We know you're going to do great things. <laughs> we know you're going to do great things. Keep them big legs out. Keep them chicken legs out your out your face. You might be. <laughs> you're a burden now. Oh, okay. You're a burden. Saying, don't let it slow you down. Don't yeah. let it slow you down. You ain't a burden <laughs> if you don't like them thick. But Shit. anyway, I'm proud of you. <laughs> Much success to you and bright future. All right. All right, peace. All right. Hey, listen. Again, guys, I appreciate the support. Make sure you check out the videos and things. Subscribe to Change Your Lives. Be on the lookout for our show next week with Mr. Short Dollar. Love you guys. Keep uh, Please continue to support me. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Take care.